Hi everyone. Welcome to our bedtime story. Um, I have two books here for us. I'm not sure how much we'll quite get through, um, but I wanted to surprise you guys and show you what I brought home from the classroom. I brought our Fierce 44 book. So I have opened it to a page that I will hope we'll get to after our new book, but I'm so excited about the new book. Um, and I had a question for you guys. You can let me know in the comments or on the blog. Um, I know that when I had to step out that day for five minutes, you read Simone Biles. Um, but I don't know if you guys read about Shirley Chisholm. So if you could let me know if you've read this, let me know. Um, if you haven't, we'll go back to her tomorrow. Okay. So I want to read five chapters. They're very short and sweet very sweet from our new book and then hopefully read about Benjamin O. Davis Sr. So that is our goal for tonight. So like I said, um, I've been trying to find books that are a fun book, right? Um, there are a couple of books that I have here as well that are really popular third graders, but I know that there are some sad parts and I feel like right now I just need a happy book. So um, I looked and looked and looked at all the famous popular books right now and for third graders especially and I came across this book, The Tale of Despero. Uh, it's by Kate DiCamillo, and she has written so many, so many popular children's books that you probably have read. Um, there's that one about Mercy Watson. There's, what are the other ones? She's written, I just, there's so many, I can't think right now, but this is what the front cover looks like. And I think that you're gonna love it. And then as an added bonus, sometime this year, Disney Plus, has been making a movie of it. So shortly we'll all be able to enjoy the movie together, um, but we can at least read the book for now, which we know is always better than the movie. So it's good to have the story in our brains before we see it in the movie. Um, it's about this little mouse. His name is Despero. That's little Despero right there. And uh, Despero is different. Uh, he doesn't conform. That's a word that shows up in the book a lot. He doesn't conform. Conform means to change yourself to make yourself like normal. So I know that we've talked a lot about being unique and not conforming. Don't follow social norms because who made those, you know? We've talked a lot about how pink is not a girl color, blue is not a boy color. Um, but people who believe that and who say, you know, I don't like pink because I'm a boy, they conform to what we're told is normal. Um, and sometimes we do conform, you know, some like right now we're conforming to the school's rules about staying home. But um, Despero doesn't conform. He has his own beliefs. He has his own interests and he doesn't act like a mouse usually. And so his family is very disappointed in him because he doesn't conform. And the whole book is about how Despero does not conform. So let us take a look. And I think, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this book is so funny and you'll see why. All the pages, can you see them right there? They're all like bitten and chewed. And you'll see why here in a second. I think that's really cool. It's part of like the whole book experience. So here we go. The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. <laughs> by the way, um, it is five points on AR for the future. The Tale of Despero being the story of a mouse, a princess, some soup, and a spool of thread. By Kate DiCamillo. Oh, here are her books. Okay. Because of Winn-Dixie, Mercy Watson to the Rescue, Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, and The Tiger Rising. If we get through this one, I want to go on to read The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Uh, I haven't read Winn-Dixie yet, though, but I know it's a popular movie. So in this book, which you can see it's a chapter book, but the, the pages are really easy to read, um, there are four books. The book... Book the first is called A Mouse is Born. Book the second is called Chiaroscuro. Book the third is called Gore, The Tale of Miggery Sow. And book the fourth is called Recalled to the Light. So the first book is told by the perspective of a narrator about Despero. Each book, we're gonna change perspectives. So we'll talk about that as we go on. At the first page, it says, the world is dark and light is precious. Come closer, dear reader. You must trust me. I am telling you a story. Book the First. A Mouse is Born. Ooh, 
I'm getting chills, guys. You're going to love this. Chapter 1. The Last One. This story begins within the walls of a castle with the birth of a mouse. A small mouse. The last mouse born to his parents and the only one of his litter to be born alive. Where are my babies? said the exhausted mother when the ordeal was through. Show me my babies. The father mouse held the one small mouse up high. There is only this one, he said. The others are dead. Mon Dieu, just the one baby mouse? Just the one. Will you name him? All of that work for nothing, said the mother. She sighed. It is so sad. It is such the disappointment. She was a French mouse who had arrived at the castle long ago in the luggage of a visiting French diplomat. Disappointment was one of her favorite words. She used it often. Will you name him? repeated the father. Will I name him? Will I name him? Of course I will name him, but he will only die like the others. Oh, so sad. Oh, such the tragedy. The mouse mother held a handkerchief to her nose and then waved it in front of her face. She sniffled. I will name him. Yes, I will name this mouse Despero for all the sadness, for the many despairs in this place. Now, where is my mirror? Her husband handed her a small shard of mirror. The mouse mother, whose name was Antoinette, looked at her reflection and gasped aloud. Toulouse, she said to one of her sons, get for me my makeup bag. My eyes are a fright. While Antoinette touched up her eye makeup, the mouse father put Despero down on a bed made of blanket scraps. The April sun, weak but determined, shone through a castle window and from there squeezed itself through a small hole in the wall and placed one golden finger on the little mouse. The other older mice children gathered around to stare at Despero. His ears are too big, said his sister Merlot. Those are the biggest ears I've ever seen. Look, said a brother named Furlo. His eyes are open. Pa, his eyes are open. They shouldn't be open. It is true. Despero's eyes should not have been open, but they were. He was staring at the sun, reflecting off his mother's mirror. The light was shining onto the ceiling in an oval of brilliance, and he was smiling up at the sight. There's something wrong with him, said the father. Leave him alone. Despero's brothers and sisters stepped back, away from the new mouse. No, nope, stop it. Felix wants to say hi to you guys. Are you, can you move through or can you say hi? Come on. Thank you. <laughs> There's something wrong with him, said the father. Leave him alone. Despero's brothers and sisters stepped back away from the new mouse. This is the last, proclaimed Antoinette from her bed. I will have no more mice babies. They are such the disappointment. They are hard on my beauty. They ruin for me my looks. This is the last one. No more. The last one, said the father, and he'll be dead soon. He can't live. Not with his eyes open like that. But reader, he did live. This is his story. It says here, Despero's eyes should not have been open. So you can see his mom looking at herself in the mirror. The dad pointing to him. And I don't know if you can see very well, but his little baby eyes are open. I'll take a picture and put it on the blog. You can't see it very well. They're like sketches from the author, so it's kind of hard to see sometimes. Chapter 2. Such a Disappointment. Despero Tilling lived. But the existence, but his existence, was cause for much speculation in the mouse community. He's the smallest mouse I've ever seen, said his Aunt Florence. It's ridiculous. No mouse has ever, ever been this small. Not even a Tilling. She looked at Despero through narrowed eyes as if she expected him to disappear entirely. No mouse, she said, ever. Despero, his tail wrapped around his feet, stared back at her. Those are some big ears he's got too, observed his uncle Alfred. They look more like donkey ears, if you ask me. They are obscenely large ears, said Aunt Florence. Despero wiggled his ears. His Aunt Florence gasped. <gasps> They say he was born with his eyes open, whispered Uncle Alfred. Despero stared hard at his uncle. Impossible, said Aunt Florence. No mouse, no matter how small or obscenely large-eared, is ever born with his eyes open. It simply isn't done. His pa, Lester, says he's not well, said Uncle Alfred. Despero sneezed. 
He said nothing in defense of himself. How could he? Everything his aunt and uncle said was true. He was ridiculously small. His ears were obscenely large. He had been born with his eyes open. And he was sickly. He coughed and sneezed so often that he carried a handkerchief in one paw at all times. He ran temperatures. He fainted at loud, no loud noises. Most alarming of all, he showed no interest in the things that a mouse should show interest in. He did not think constantly of food. He was not intent on tracking down every crumb. While his larger, older siblings ate, Despero stood with his head cocked to one side, holding very still. Do you hear that sweet, sweet sound? He said. I hear the sound of cake crumbs falling out of people's mouths and hitting the floor, said his brother Toulouse. That's what I hear. No, said Despero. It's something else. It sounds like, um, honey. You might have big ears, said Toulouse. But they're not attached to your brain. You don't hear honey. You smell honey. When there's honey to smell, which there isn't. Son, barked Despero's father. Snap to it. Get your head out of the clouds and hunt for crumbs. Please, said his mother. Look for the crumbs. Eat them to make your mama happy. You are such the skinny mouse. You are a disappointment to your mama. Sorry, said Despero. He lowered his head and sniffed the castle floor. But reader... He was not smelling. He was listening with his big ears to the sweet sound that no other mouse seemed to hear. Chapter three, once upon a time. Let us see here. I think we can read one chapter and then we can go on to Benjamin O. Davis. Chapter three, once upon a time. Despero's siblings tried to educate him in the ways of being a mouse. His brother Furlow took him on a tour of the castle to demonstrate the art of scurrying. Move side to side, instructed Furlow, scrabbling across the wax castle floor. Look over your shoulder all the time, first to the right, then to the left. Don't stop for anything. But Despero wasn't listening to Furlow. He was staring at the light pouring in through the stained glass windows of the castle. He stood on his hind legs and held his handkerchief over his heart and stared up, up, up into the brilliant light. Furlow, he said, what is this thing? What are all these colors? Are we in heaven? Cripes, shouted Furlow from far corner. Don't stand there in the middle of the floor talking about heaven. Move, you're a mouse, not a man. You've got to scurry. What, said Despero, still staring at the light. But Furlow was gone. He had, like a good mouse, disappeared into a hole in the molding. Despero's sister Merlot took him into the castle library, where light came streaming in through tall, high windows and landed on the floor in bright yellow patches. Here, said Merlot, follow me, small brother, and I will instruct you on the fine points of how to nibble paper. You get it? They nibble paper. Merlot scurried up a chair and from there hopped onto a table on which there sat a huge open book. This way, small brother, she said as she crawled onto the pages of the book and Despero followed her from the chair to the table to the page. Now then, said Merlot, this glue here is tasty, and the paper edges are crunchy and yummy like so. She nibbled the edge of a page and then looked over at Despero. You try, she said. First, a bite of some glue, and then follow with a crunch of the paper. And these squiggles, they're very tasty. Despero looked down at the book, and something remarkable happened. The marks on the pages, the squiggles, as Merlot referred to them, arrange themselves into shapes. The shapes arrange themselves into words, and the words spelled out a delicious and wonderful phrase. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, whispered Despero. What? said Merlot. Nothing. Eat, said Merlot. Here he is reading the book. Once upon a time. I couldn't possibly, said Despero, backing away from the book. Why? Um, said Despero, it would ruin the story. The story? What story? Merlot stared at him. A piece of paper trembled at the end of one of her indignant whiskers. It's just like Pa said when you were born. Something is not right with you. She turned and scurried from the library to tell her parents about this latest disappointment. 
Despero waited until she was gone, and then he reached out and with one paw touched the lovely words, once upon a time. He shivered. He sneezed. He blew his nose into his handkerchief. Once upon a time, he said aloud, relishing the sound. And then, tracing each word with his paw, he read the story of a beautiful princess and a brave knight who serves and honors her. Despero did not know it, but he would need, very soon, to be brave himself. Have I mentioned that beneath the castle there was a dungeon? And in the dungeon there were rats. Large rats. Mean rats. Despero was destined to meet those rats. Reader, you must know that an interesting fate, sometimes involving rats, sometimes not, awaits almost everyone, mouse or man, who does not conform. <gasps> oh man, guys, we're at 15 minutes. I think YouTube won't let me upload. So I'm going to put a bookmark. I still don't have a bookmark. I need to get one. I'm going to put a bookmark in chapter four for tomorrow. And we will also pick up on Benjamin O. Davis Sr. Maybe I'll make a short video and put that on as well. We'll see where we get to. All right, guys, tuck yourselves in and have a good night. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.